Hello again, my name's John and welcome to my latest video. Before I get started on this recipe, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the well-wishers for their kind comments after my recent surgery. I really do appreciate it. Ok, let's get started on this recipe. This time I'm going to show you how we make our delicious beef stew and crispy dumplings. This is a list of the ingredients you'll need for the beef stew and this is what you'll need for the dumplings. I'll be making my stew in this 5 litre Dutch oven. Alternatively you can use a ceramic casserole dish like this one or even an ordinary similar sized pan as long as it has a lid. What beef to use? Obviously you can use 1 kilogram, that's 2.2 pounds, of ordinary lean stewing steak. Just get your butcher to cut it into large pieces like you'll see in the video. But what I'm using is half of this 2 kilogram topside roasting joint that my local supermarket was selling off at half price just after Christmas. I'll trim as much fat as I can off it and then dice half of it and freeze the other half. <laughs> I'm no butcher by the way so hold back on the comments please. What I do know is more accidents are caused in commercial kitchens by using blunt knives. So always keep your knives as sharp as you can. That way you don't have to put so much pressure on the knife when you're cutting something and in turn reducing the risk of slipping. Ok, after dicing the beef, coat the chunks in approximately 100 grams, that's 3.5 ounces of plain or all-purpose flour. This does a couple of things. It helps brown the beef off in the frying pan, as you'll see a little later, and it helps thicken the stew in the oven. Preparing the vegetables. For this recipe you'll need two large carrots, one large onion, four cloves of garlic, one small turnip or swede, and one large leek. I'll just let you watch how I prepare the veg for this stew. This stage can be done well beforehand. Note, apart from the garlic, everything is cut into fairly large chunky pieces for this stew. If you haven't prepared a turnip or a swede before, this is how we have always done it. First top and tail the turnip in my case, then cut it in half straight down the middle and then slice each half into four slabs. This makes it a lot easier to peel and dice. And by the way, the difference between a turnip and a swede is that the turnip has a slightly stronger flavour. Right, and finally, cut the large leek into chunks as shown in the video. And don't forget to save about 100 grams, that's 3.5 ounces of the outer leaves to add to the dumpling mix a little later. Now that everything for the stew is prepared, it's time to start browning or sealing the floured beef chunks. Add about 1.5 tablespoons of vegetable oil to a large frying pan and start to fry the beef until it's sealed or browned on all sides. This locks in the flavour of the meat. 
and like I said earlier, the flour helps brown the beef and adds a little thickening to the finished stew, but it will need extra thickening later on when I add the dumplings, using corn flour or you may know that as corn starch. Do this step in two or three batches. If you try to fry off the beef all at once, the meat will just end up boiling in an overcrowded pan instead of frying. Once all the beef is browned off, deglaze the pan with a little of the beef stock from the recipe, then pour it back into the stock jug. There's a lot of flavour and thickening in the frying pan and you don't want to waste any of it. Preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius, that's 320 Fahrenheit or Gas Mark 3. I'm setting mine to 140 as my oven is fan assisted and runs about 20 degrees Celsius hotter than indicated on the dial. Let's get going on putting the stew together. I'll start by heating up the Dutch oven on a medium flame. It has about a teaspoon of oil caught in the bottom of the pot. If you're using a ceramic dish like the one on screen, do not put this on an open flame. Just add everything to the pot cold, but add an extra 15 minutes to the cooking time in the oven. Ok, start by adding the vegetables and meat to the pot and give them a good mix. Now I can start adding the seasoning. First is a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. Next is half a teaspoon of table or kosher salt. Then the four cloves of garlic. And finally, half a teaspoon of dried thyme. Thyme goes beautifully with beef stew. The next ingredient to add is the 500 mils or one pint of beef stock. I'm using some stock I had left from a roast joint I did at the weekend, along with a little of the beef gravy that was left. But you can use stock cubes for this, because they are pretty good these days. And now to the good part of this recipe, which is one pint of strong brown ale or stout. Just pour it into the pot straight from the bottle. I'm using our local brew, which is very well known in the northeast of England and has a bit of a reputation of making people fall down a lot. Personally, I'm a teetotaler, so don't worry, the cooking process eliminates all of the alcohol from this beer. And that's all of the stew ingredients together in the pot. Now I'll just bring the pot to a boil, put the lid on and get it into the middle of the oven and set the timer for two hours. Don't forget, if you're using a ceramic casserole dish where everything is still cold, add an extra 15 minutes to the cooking time in the oven. Ok, while the stew is cooking, I can get on with making the dumpling mix. And this is a list of the ingredients you'll need for these leek dumplings. 300 grams, that's 10.5 ounces of self-raising flour. 2 teaspoons of baking powder. If you're using plain or all-purpose flour, use 4 teaspoons of baking powder. 175 grams, that's 6 ounces of milk. 60 grams, that's 2 ounces of butter. 100 grams, that's 3.5 ounces of beef suet, one large egg, and 100 grams, that's 3.5 ounces of finely chopped leeks. Start by finely chopping the 100 grams of leek leaves you saved from the main recipe. Mm -hmm. 
First add the self raising flour to the bowl followed by the 2 teaspoons of baking powder. And like I said earlier if all you have is plain or all purpose flour add 4 teaspoons of baking powder. Don't get confused with baking soda it has to be baking powder. Next up is the 60 grams or 2 ounces of butter and gently rub it into the flour until it resembles fine bread crumbs. This took me about 3 minutes. Add the leeks and once again gently mix them into the flour separating any leeks that are stuck together. Now add the beef or vegetable suet. Do this step fairly quickly as the heat from your hands could melt the suet. Time to add the wet ingredients. Mix the one large egg with the 175 grams, that's 6 ounces of full or half fat milk. Now add it to the mix and gently cut it in using an ordinary dinner knife until it all comes together in a sticky mass like you see in the video. This should only take about 2 to 3 minutes. If all your measurements are correct it will all come together just like mine. Once it all comes together cover the bowl with a tea towel and let it rest at room temperature until it's needed. Time to make up the thickening agent. I use corn flour for this or you may know that as corn starch. In a jug add 2 heaped teaspoons of corn flour and approximately 150 grams that's 5 ounces of cold water and give it a good whisk. Then I'll set that aside until I need it. Ok the 2 hours are up and it's time to start adding the dumplings. If you're using a metal pan or a dutch oven like me turn your hob onto a low heat. If you're using a ceramic dish don't light the hob, just do these next steps as quickly as possible. Once you take the lid off the pot you get a fantastic aroma of the hops from the beer mixed with the beef. It really is quite wonderful. As you can see the stew is already slightly thick. That's from the flour we used when we coated the meat at the start. Place the pot on the heat and add all of the thickening. This will also help the dumplings float a lot better. Now using a dessert spoon start adding the dumpling mix to the pot. Keep dipping the spoon in the gravy to prevent the dumpling mix from sticking to the spoon. should be enough mix to do about 10 dumplings but for this demonstration I'm only going to add 7. If like my first dumpling here it looks a bit small just add an extra bit on the top. Once the dumplings have been added to the pot they need to cook for 30 minutes. For crispy dumplings like I'm making leave the lid off in the oven. If you want soft topped dumplings put the lid back on. Now I need to raise the heat a little in the oven, so I'll turn it up to 180 degrees Celsius, that's 356 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4, and set the timer for 30 minutes. I've set my oven to 160, allowing for the fan assist. 
And there you go folks. The dumplings have doubled in size with a crispy top and golden brown. And the meat and vegetables are tender and delicious in this thick rich beer gravy. The smell is absolutely wonderful. This is what I call proper comfort food, especially on a cold winter's night. I'll let it rest for a couple of minutes and let you see what it looks like served up in a bowl. As you can see the meat is tender and just falls apart and the dumplings are soft and extremely light on the inside and wonderfully crispy on the top. Soon as you cut into these dumplings the first thing you notice is the gorgeous aroma of the leeks. Well, that's just about it for this one. I really do hope you give it a try, as there's nothing too difficult about it if you follow all the instructions and measurements carefully. My safety tip of the day is never use a damp tea towel or cloth to remove hot items from the oven, as the water in the material instantly turns to steam and will travel very quickly through the cloth to your fingers. So, thanks again for watching. I'll be back with another recipe very soon. Please like, share, comment and maybe subscribe by hitting the circle above. In the meantime, here's some of my other videos you may want to watch. Bye for now.